All right, what's going on guys? So today I'm just gonna give you three kettlebell exercises you can do to develop core strength. Let's do it. All right, so when you're talking about developing the core muscles, right, we're talking about the obliques, the rectus abdominals, the QL, lower back, all the muscles that basically wrap around your trunk. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna use kettlebells and the reason why kettlebells is because they don't take up a lot of space. You don't need a gym to actually do it. You can use it in your garage. You can take it to a park. So I got three different kettlebells here. We're gonna go a 30 pound kettlebell and this is gonna be more for gaining more rotation and using the obliques, the internal external obliques to get that rotation and to work on gaining thoracic spine mobility. If you're looking to be uh, more powerful in your strikes, if you're a combat sport athlete, overhand athlete, something like throwing motions, anything like that that requires rotation, this is gonna be beneficial to increase that range of motion and also activate the muscles that cause that rotation. And then another one we're gonna do is going to be a static hold position. So we're gonna go front rack position on the kettlebells. We're gonna do inline or cross connect marching. So we're gonna utilize the hip flexors, the obliques, the rectus abdominals to stabilize and maintain posture. And we're gonna do that for a time domain. And then from there, the last one is going to be an anti-rotation. We're going to do kettlebell pull-throughs and we're going to walk with it. So you're going to have a dynamic component put into that. So we're going to go pull-through, walk over, pull-through, walk over. The goal for this is to maintain stability. When you go to pull the weight, you don't want to rotate. So you're maintaining that anti-rotation component there as well. So all the muscles that rotate, all the muscles that stabilize the body, this is what we're gonna work on with the kettlebell. So first exercise, you're gonna need some type of block. You can use a med ball here, but you're gonna use that to place your hand on that particular implement so that it locks in the body. So the reason why I wanna do that is because when I go to rotate, I just wanna rotate through my T-spine. So I'm locking my hips down, I'm disassociating my hips from my spine in general, and then also I wanna make sure I'm staying tight in my lumbar spine. So I'm gonna take the kettlebell, and I'm actually gonna pull that kettlebell like a row position, lock in my lat, and then I'm gonna rotate through that plane of motion all while keeping the hand down so you're getting a good stretch here and then you're pulling and using your obliques to rotate your body, right? You can use anywhere from a 20 to even a 50 pound kettlebell. Again, you don't wanna lose your form. You don't wanna lose that formation of the body when you go to rotate. So make sure that you're taking a weight that allows you to still get the work done and get that stimulus but doesn't throw you off of that full range. I'm gonna stagger my feet here, right? My front foot is just gonna be right by the ball. So you can put your foot right on the side of the ball. The other hand is down, and then your shoulder blades are gonna be packed down as well, so you're creating good posture, neutral spine position, or whatever you wanna call it. Heels off the ground on the back side. You don't really have to, but you wanna maintain a good position, so if you have limited dorsiflexion, you can let that heel hover, it's not a big deal. The goal here is to get that rotation, like I said. So all of this stays the same. You don't wanna kick the knees out or cave in or anything of that nature. We're gonna go ahead and stabilize the hips. So I'm squeezing my glutes and my adductors here as I go to rotate. I take the kettlebell, I'm gonna pull up to that end range of the row position. And then from there, I'm just gonna rotate for as far as I can and then back down. And then maintain this position, right? So your lats engaged. Right, you're not shrugged up like this. Shoulder blades are down and packed, and then you're gonna rotate. And then as far as the breathing mechanics, you're gonna inhale, and then as you go to rotate, you rotate with an exhale. The reason why we're loading this pattern is again to get a higher stimulus. We're gonna activate the lat, that's what's also gonna help with rotation. And then on our far side oblique, we're gonna go ahead and rotate with that too as well. As far as sets and reps, three to four sets, roughly 10 to 12 repetitions, somewhere around there. You're gonna want like a two to three second eccentric coming back down just to maintain stability. Drive up one to two seconds, but the hold is the most important. So you're gonna hold for about two to three seconds at that full rotation, right? So we're gonna activate at the end range, squeeze as much out of it as we can, and then go back into the original position. So the next one is gonna be somewhat of a gait movement, but we're just cross connect walking, or you can stay in one spot if you don't have room, right? So you don't have to move, but if you do have the room, you go ahead and, and walk with it. When you go to walk, make sure as you come down, 
the legs or the feet I should say connect and hit the ground right underneath the hip so you're not cycling or reaching out when you do this right everything's kind of a small motion if you don't have the room you can just stay still just making sure that your posture is aligned you're keeping a tall hip position and then you're rotating through that plane of motion so cross connect meaning elbow to knee you don't want to let the knee go through the midline we're going to bring it up and then just rotate through the midline here keep your head facing forward or your eyes facing forward you're not turning your head as you rotate again the kettlebells are dependent upon the weight of it depends upon your strength level um, i think these are 35s right you can go up as heavy as you want just make sure that you maintain your form and your positioning okay front rack position lock in place from there i'm just gonna march and it's only a three degree turn slightly in that midline. So I'm not over rotating too much. We're just bringing it up and just slightly rotating and keeping the kettlebells in front driving up. Now, as you do that, you'll feel your obliques fire up. You have to maintain your posture. So your abs are going to be on. You're also going to feel it slightly in the glutes. You might even feel it in the low back a little bit, but that's only to maintain your posture. You're going to need to be strong in this position and not fall all over the place where you're swaying back and forth or crunching side to side. So again, make sure you pick a weight that you're comfortable with and then you can progress it going further. So three to four sets, 60 seconds. If you're going for distance, it's the same thing. Just count for the time. Don't worry about the distance. You wanna cover the distance, but the goal isn't to go as far as you can. The goal is to get that range of motion locked in, making sure you're stabilizing and then also doing it for a sustainable amount of time. So the next one is going to be an anti-rotation exercise. Now you can use this again, going for distance or just you know, walking your way through, or you can stay in one position if you don't have the room to do so. But you're basically, what you're gonna do is you're gonna get into a bare sit position where the knees are off the ground. So you're gonna be I would say knees right around the hip and then the hands are gonna be around the shoulders, all right? So right underneath the shoulders. You lock in place, tilt the kettlebell down because you're gonna pull it through the body. Now, if you're gonna go and just walk with it, you're gonna pull and then you're gonna sidestep over. So you sidestep with your hands and your feet and replace it going all the way down. You do 10 times on one side, 10 times on the other, and this is what it looks like. So we're gonna pull, make sure the knees are slightly hovering over the ground, then we sidestep. Staying low to the ground, don't let the hips raise up. Sidestep, abs are still on, pull through. Sidestep. Pull through. If you don't have the room, right, you wanna go 10 and 10. If you don't have the room, you just stay on one spot and you just flip it over. Pull it through, flip it down, other side, and you just alternate. So you don't need a whole lot of room to do either or. If you don't have any room, you can stay here isolated. All right guys, so there you have it. Three kettlebell exercises to increase core strength, anti-rotation and rotation. This is good for combat sport athletes. It's good for baseball players. It's good for football players. Anybody who's doing rotation, definitely gonna help. And just in general, right? If you're just a general practitioner, somebody who wants to train you know, like an athlete, this is something that you are gonna wanna do. If you like these exercises, hit the comments down below. If you have any questions, I'll be sure to answer them as best as I can. I am highly busy, so excuse me if I don't get to you right away. If you're a coach in the South Florida area, right? Anywhere, West Palm Beach down to Miami, and you wanna coach side by side with me in the Roostrong Performance Center, here in Deerfield Beach, Florida, you're looking to gain knowledge, but also train some of the best athletes in the world in the sports of MMA, boxing, basketball, all in all like that. Check us out, man. We're looking for new trainers, looking for coaches. I'm looking for PTs. I'm looking for athletic trainers, all in all, to be a part of the gym. So if you're ready, click the link down below to get contact with us so that we can get you on a consult and actually see if you're a good fit. If you haven't done so, make sure you subscribe, hit the notification. If you are subscribed so you know when my videos come out, hit the like button. If you like this style of video, let me know. Let's boost these algorithms and keep this thing rolling. Been doing it for quite some time, so I wanna keep flowing. Also, if you're a boxer or anybody that wants to train like a boxer, check out Heavy Hitter. My boxing strength and conditioning program is now available, link is in the description. One, it's gonna help you gain power, it's gonna help you get strength and structural integrity, and it's also gonna increase your conditioning too as well. So check it out down below. See you again next time, peace.